One of the most common mistakes that I see with a lot of websites is just that to this day, there are still a lot of websites that are just loading in these huge unoptimized images. So every once in a while, you'll come across someone's website where the images just crawl onto your screen. It takes forever to load. And it's probably because they haven't been optimized at all. So maybe you're loading in megabytes of images that really only need to be kilobytes, or it doesn't have to be that egregious. It can just be maybe a 200 kilobyte image that could just be cut in half with some proper image optimization techniques. And whereas an image here and there that's a little bit bigger than it needs to be isn't a huge deal, I like to have my websites as optimized as possible so that my users don't have to load in a bunch of resources that they don't really need to. A lot of people are on slower connections and just optimizing your website and making it as fast as possible is just a common courtesy to those people. So in this video, I will teach you how to optimize your JPEG images. These are going to be your photos or any image with a whole lot of colors or details. And I'll show you how to optimize your PNGs, which are going to be images with less colors and less complexity. Or if you need something with a transparent background, then you would use PNGs. I'm sure you probably already know the difference between PNGs and JPEGs, but that's just the very basics of them if you don't know anything else. And finally, we'll go over how to optimize SVGs. These are scalable vector graphics. Say you want some icon that you can blow up to 500 times the size and it will still look good. So I can blow this up to five times the size and it won't look pixelated or anything. It will still have the same crisp lines because that's how SVGs work. So let me just go ahead and show you how you can optimize these. So we have a 1.1 megabyte image right here. So let's just pare this down a little bit and see what we can do with this. Now for starters, we are going to use the command line tool image magic in order to perform these optimizations. So I think it's available in all your standard repositories. So you should just be able to run your package manager and say install image magic spelled like this. And once that is installed, you can now use a couple of command line tools. The first we'll be looking at is called convert. And this is a whole bunch of stuff right here, but let's just start with the very basics. Let's go into our directory and let's run convert. And let's take this image.jpg right here. And then a very basic optimization we can make to it is just to resize it. So this is a pretty big image right here. I'm not sure of the exact dimensions, but if we have a website and we have a column that is only 400 pixels wide, then it really only needs to be 400 pixels. So we can just pass in the option dash resize and then put in the width right here. Now, if you also want to pass in the height here, you can do that as well. So you can say 400 times 400 and it will fit the image inside a 400 by 400 box. It's going to preserve the aspect ratio by default. So you're not going to end up with some stretched out image. So it, it would just be a maximum height of 400 and then the width would be something smaller in this case. But you don't have to pass in the height. You can just set the width to be 400 and then it will adjust the height accordingly in order to keep the aspect ratio here. But we can just do that and then we're going to want to pass in an output file. So it's not going to overwrite the initial image by default. So let's create another image. Let's say image.min.jpg. Run that, wait a second, reload this. And comparing the file sizes, this is 1.1 megabytes and this is 13 kilobytes. So that's already a pretty big size difference but you probably also want to control the quality of this as well. So just from the screenshot right here, the quality doesn't look too bad. I can't really tell any discernible difference just right now, but let me delete this real quick and show you the quality option that you can pass in. And you can just do that by passing in the option quality. And then let's say 75. I found this to be a pretty good compromise between file size and quality. So with this, you can't really tell any significant change from the original. It's going to look pretty good, but of course, if you want more detail, then you can pass in something like 95. If you want less, you can do less. This is a percentage, so 100 is the most, zero is the least. But let's just pass in 75 here. And we now have this, and this is 14 kilobytes. So I believe the default for quality is around something like 75. But for me, I always just pass in this quality option right here. And those are the two options that I use the most but there are just tons of options that you can pass in here. And if you want a complete list, then you can run man convert and see the manual page. And it will just have every single option available 
on this page. As you can see, there are just tons that you will probably never use, but it's nice to know that they're there if you do want to use them. Uh, one more I should probably tell you about is the strip command. So it's gonna be dash strip. And this is going to strip all the unnecessary metadata from your image. So by default, if you take this on a camera or something, it'll embed a whole bunch of metadata about the image that if we're putting this on the web, we probably don't care about. So this will strip all of that away and save a bit of file size. But if you want the best bang for your buck quality wise, uh, there are a few extra options that you can pass in here. Let me just pull this up. So you can put in all of these if you want the absolute best bang for your buck quality wise. You can add in a sampling factor here and pass in all these options that will basically just optimize it a little bit better. I didn't write this personally, I just found this online. These are just guidelines that I got online for how to optimize an image well. So if you really want something like the perfect script, this would probably be it. And so you can just pass all these options every single time that you want to convert an image, but you probably don't want to type this all out or remember any of this every time. So of course you can just put this in a script, which is what I have done. So let me just open up this script I have called WebJPEG. This is just a bash script that I made with basically the command that I just showed you. I think the only difference is that I ratcheted up the quality a little bit from 75 to 85. It's not really gonna make a big difference in the file size to be honest. So you can play around with that if you want to see the difference. But I have this bash script here and basically you can pass in a few arguments. So the first argument is just going to be the input file. Second argument is going to be the size that you wanna resize it to. And the third is just going to be the output file. So yeah, you can just create this script right here. I'll probably leave a link to this in the description if you just want to copy this over. And then of course you can make it executable by running chmod plus x web jpeg. So we can now run this command. Let's delete this old one right here. And let's say web jpeg, we want to convert image.jpg. Let's make it a width of 400 pixels again. And finally the output, it will just be the same as always, image.min.jpg. And we now have all this without having to remember the entire command. Okay, and next let's just go over how to optimize PNGs. There's going to be a lot less options than something like JPEG. You're not gonna have all these different fun options, but there are two main options that you're going to use to optimize PNGs. So let's say we want to convert this screenshot.png to screenshot.min.png. And we're just going to want to pass the dash strip option in order to strip the metadata. That'll already save quite a bit of file size. So we can just run this and then, so the original file is 420 kilobytes, but this new one is 376 kilobytes, just running the strip command. And of course we can also resize this. So let's just pass in the dash resize because this is probably a little bit big. 376 kilobytes is still pretty large for an image that you want to have on your website. So we can just resize this, let's say 400 pixels wide again, reload this, and it is now 67 kilobytes, which is a pretty good saving. But for this specific image, we probably don't need to have it as a PNG. Uh, it would make more sense for an icon or something like that. But since you can't even read anything on here, since it has an image as a background, it would probably be better for a JPEG. And you can do that just by passing in the same parameters and just changing the file type. So let's run the web JPEG command again, but instead of this, let's pass in the screenshot.png 400, and then let's save it as a screenshot.jpg. Run that, and we now have a much smaller 16 kilobyte JPEG image with not a huge difference in quality. So this is probably fine if you want a thumbnail or something like that. Maybe they can click to get the full image if they want. Okay, and this is fine for just doing one image at a time, but maybe you have a whole bunch of images that you wanna pass all the same parameters to. So we have a folder right here with three images, and if you wanted to get all of those at the same time, then you can run the command Mogrify, which is also using Image Magic. This will also be there if you install the Image Magic package. Mogrify is more for doing batch updates to all of these images. So if we want to convert a whole bunch of them at a time, then we, would use this command right here. And we're going to use the same options that we passed in before, but with the only difference is that we're passing in this path option as well. 
and this path is going to be where all the finished images are put. So if you don't have a path, then it will overwrite all of these. But if you don't want it to overwrite, then you would put in the path and pass in the folder that you want to put these in. So let's just CD into this batch folder right here and then run this command right here. Uh, let's actually first create a directory for our finished images to go to. So let's call it uh, min. And so we're going to put in the path min. That's the folder that we want the output to be in. And then we're just going to grab all the JPEGs in this folder, hit enter. And after a second, this folder should fill up with one, three, two. All right. And as you can see, these are all with the reduced file size. So all of these have been converted pretty easily. That's helpful if you have a ton of images that you want to convert all at once. And that about covers it for how to deal with JPEGs and PNGs. But let's go over one more thing in this video, the SVGs. So let me just delete all of these that we don't need anymore. So a lot of SVGs that you get, they will have a bunch of metadata and fluff. Say you exported from a program like Illustrator or Inkscape, it's probably going to have a lot of uh, superfluous metadata that you don't actually need. So if we open up this file right here, uh, as you can see, a lot of this is just metadata. So there's a title right here, there's a description, there's a license right here. And all of this we don't really need. Well, you might want to check out the license uh, just so you don't violate any copyright. But in this case, we want this all gone. And as you can see, the actual SVG is only taking up about half of the file. The other half is just metadata. And so we can remove all that with this tool called SVG Go. So let me just show you this here. This is a tool written in Node.js. So it's written in JavaScript. So if you're a JavaScript hater, you're just going to have to deal with it because this is basically the best SVG optimizer that is available. And so if you don't have Node.js installed already, you would just install it via your package manager. For me, that would be something like uh, Node.js. And then to install this, you would just install it through NPM, which comes with Node.js. So you would just run NPM install global SVG Go. I guess that would be SVG O. Stands for SVG Optimizer. All right, but let's assume you have that installed already. And so the syntax for optimizing these is going to be SVG O. And then the input file, let's get logo, or let's go to the right directory. And our SVG O, the input file right here, dash O, and then the output. So let's say logo.min svg run that and as you can see it even tells us how much we have saved it is a 60 percent reduction it's from four kilobytes to one kilobyte and we can just look in this file and as you can see it removes all the metadata and just pushes this all together so that it'll load faster on any connection that's very useful if you have some larger svgs obviously this four kilobyte logo right here is probably not going to break somebody's bandwidth but for larger SVG images, it is very useful. And with SVGO, you can also pass in a directory. So if you want to batch convert a bunch of SVG files, you would run dash F for the folder option. You would put in some folder here. So something like this, and then dash O will be the output. And then you would have another folder, say path to optimize SVGs and then run that and it'll pass everything in this folder to that folder optimized and that's it with svgo it's pretty well optimized out of the box i never had to make any changes to it so that's very useful so you now know how to optimize all of your images on the command line and so now you have no excuses for a bunch of big bloated images on your website so i don't want to catch any of you with a bunch of oversized images on your websites anymore and of course finally if you're using some website framework or some static site generator, say something like Hugo, then there are probably a lot of options in order to process the images inside that. But if you just have a very basic HTML, CSS website, or maybe you don't have very many images at all, you just have a few that you want to optimize specifically, and it's not really a very image heavy website, so you don't need to worry about constantly automating the process. So if you don't mind doing it yourself, this is a great option. I will have another video coming out shortly if you want to use some static site generator like Hugo, say. I will 
have a video on how to process those images and optimize them. But if you just have a few images that you want to convert on the command line, Image Magic and SVGO cannot really be beat. So go out and make your websites a little bit faster.